What's up guys, Chicks here from Chicks Tech Reviews. So today I'll be sharing with you the most useful Android TV box advice, tips and common questions. If you're thinking of buying an Android TV box, I highly recommend you to watch this video first. Android TV boxes are still quite new and many people out there just don't know what it is or exactly what it can do. So I made this video to help you understand this product better, what it can do for you and a few common questions which people need to know. So let's get right to it. The first question I have is, what is an Android TV box? Well, an Android TV box is basically a full version of Android in a box, which you can connect to a TV via HDMI. You can then enjoy many useful apps on the big screen, like YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime videos, and many more. You will also have access to the full Google Play Store, where you can download hundreds and thousands of free games and apps. So the next common question you may ask is, are Android TV boxes illegal? Now there is a misconception that these TV boxes are illegal. Well in fact, they are actually not illegal. You can buy a box, download any app from the Google Play Store, and you are not breaking the law. There is so much legitimate content available paid and free. However, some people out there like to modify their box by installing third-party apps, which are not available in the Play Store such as Showbox, Kodi Builds, Terranium TV, Mobdro, and many more. Now these apps will let you watch the latest movies in HD, 4K, and 3D, including the latest cinema movies. Furthermore, with apps like Mobdro, Solid Streams, and LiveNet TV, you can access Sky Sports, BT Sports, ESPN, WWE, and UFC pay-per-views all for free. And yes, if you do install any of these third-party apps, then it is obviously illegal. So stick to the Google Play Store and you are not breaking the law. I personally don't recommend any of you to break the law. I'm only giving you this info so you know that Android TV boxes are perfectly legal, just like your mobile phone or tablet. What you do on it, of course, is your responsibility. Now, the next common question is, can you stream in 4K on Netflix and YouTube? So you're buying a 4K TV box, so one should automatically assume that YouTube and Netflix will stream 4K as standard. Well, this is actually not true. Only TV boxes licensed by Google can do 4K streaming from Netflix and YouTube. For example, the Nvidia Shield TV, the Xiaomi box, and the Amazon Fire TV all can stream 4K content from the popular streaming apps. So these boxes are true 4K TV boxes. In 2018, we are expecting to see many more true 4K TV boxes to appear. So stay tuned as I will certainly cover them on the channel. So the next question is, can I legally watch free movies and live TV? Well, the answer is yes. There are many apps in the Play Store which let you enjoy free, legal, legit movies such as YouTube, Crackle, Popcorn Flicks, Tubi TV and many more. For live and catch-up TV, you have SPB TV, BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, 4OD, Demand5, Filmon and many, many more. Next question, can I play games on this? Yes, you can. There are hundreds and thousands of free and paid games available in the Play Store. However, there is also a library of more graphically intense games, Modern Combat 5, GTA San Andreas, Asphalt 8, Gangster Vegas, Unkilled, and many more. The lineup of big games is forever growing, so if you're looking to play any of these type of big games, I would highly recommend a more powerful GPU, such as the Mali 720, 860, or the Mali 880. If you're not bothered about gaming or just want a casual game of Angry Birds or Crossy Roads, then the Mali 450 is more than sufficient. So the next question, can you play movies or videos from a USB drive? Yes, you can play all videos and audio formats, including MKV, MP4, MOV, AVI, etc. You can play your movies, videos or photos from a USB port or a micro SD card slot. You can attach up to 4 TB drives and access all your multimedia very nicely and display it and share it on the big screen. Moving on to the next question, what video codecs and formats are supported? This is a question I get asked a lot. Will a certain TV box run MKVs or MP4s? Well, all Android TV boxes can run any video format you want. I highly recommend using the latest version of Kodi as Kodi has all the video and audio codecs built in. So the best media player to enjoy all the video and audio formats has to be Kodi Media Player. 
which is a free app available from the Play Store. Another great option is the VLC Media Player, which is also a free app available from the Play Store. Next one is what video resolutions are supported. Whilst the TV box can run any video format, and most TV boxes can easily run 720p to 1080p videos with no issues. However, if you plan on watching Ultra HD 4K videos, then you need to consider buying a mid to high end Android TV box, which will have the sufficient specs to run 4K nice and smooth. Now that brings us to the next question. Does more RAM matter? RAM is very important for multitasking, but not only that, in an Android TV box, RAM is what allows you to watch 4K videos nice and smooth. So the more RAM you have, the smoother the 4K video will play. If you buy a TV box with less RAM, chances are the 4K video will stutter, buffer, or even refuse to play. If you want to watch 4K videos at 60 frames per second or higher, I recommend a box with at least 3 gigs of DDR3 RAM or 2 gigs of DDR4 RAM. That's the minimum I would recommend. DDR4 RAM is three times faster than DDR3, so if you can, try and get something with DDR4. So the next question is, can I enjoy a cheap Android TV box under $40? The answer is yes, there is a TV box available for all budgets. If you wanted a simple Android TV box to stream 720p movies and TV shows, and you're not bothered about games or 4K content, then yes, you can buy a cheap box. The only thing I would recommend is always aim for at least 2 gigs of RAM for overall smooth experience, as most of the TV box that I have tested with 1 gigabyte of RAM struggle to provide a smooth experience. It will lag, stutter and buffer quite a bit, and eventually start freezing and malfunctioning, as the box just can't handle well with 1 gig of RAM. Another common question I get asked is, is the standard remote control okay? Can I do everything with it? Well, the standard remote that comes with nearly all Android TV boxes is only sufficient for basic operation. For some apps like YouTube, you will need a cursor or a mouse. The standard remote will have a mouse button, but it is very slow and tedious to use. The best solution is to use a mini wireless keyboard like this one. Now this can do everything that your standard remote control can do, including many useful shortcuts, multimedia buttons, a full QWERTY keyboard, and a very nice multi-touch touchpad. Alternatively, you can attach a regular or wireless mouse and keyboard, and that works pretty good too. Another great question is, what is the best game controller? The best game controller I have used so far on an Android TV box is no doubt the GameSir G4S. It feels as premium as the Xbox 360 controller, but what makes this controller extra special is it can be used via Bluetooth or USB dongle. Furthermore, this controller also works great on Windows PCs. So this is an awesome all-round versatile game controller, and I use this every single day. Next question is, can you game stream? So you can stream your PC games and play them directly on your Android TV box. And the best two apps I found is Moonlight and Kino Console. Now for PCs with an NVIDIA GPU, you can use the Moonlight app. And if you have a non-NVIDIA GPU, you would go for the Kino Console app. So these apps will let you stream your games from your PC to enjoy on your Android TV box. Another common question is, can I Chromecast or screen mirror? Now most Android TV boxes come with Miracast or Chromecast features built in, which will allow you to mirror your Android device on the big screen. However, there is another app called Splashtop 2, which will allow you to mirror your PC screen directly onto the Android TV box. You will then be able to fully control your Windows PC from your Android TV box, which opens the doors for many possibilities. This is great for playing games, watching movies, or accessing your files or photos to share with everyone on the big screen. So with Splashtop 2, you're not just mirroring your screen, you are actually controlling your PC completely from the Android TV box. Here's a very common question I get asked, are benchmarks important? Now you hear some people say benchmarks are not everything. A typical anti to benchmark test will analyze your device and push it to its limit to find out how well it can perform in four important performance areas, which are 3D graphics, RAM, CPU and user experience. Now if you have a TV box which is slow and struggles with general performance and gaming etc, you are going to get low benchmark scores. On the other hand, if you have a device which is great in all categories, your score will be naturally higher. Now every time you run a benchmark test on the same device, you will get slightly different scores. So on the devices that I review, I run the anti test three times back to back, and I take the highest score from the three. 
So there you have it guys, that was my most useful Android TV box advice, tips and common questions. And with that being said, I'll leave some useful links in the description for most of the things mentioned in this video like game controller, wireless keyboard, streaming apps, free apps etc. And for obvious reasons, I will not leave the links for any of those third party apps I mentioned, so please feel free to google them yourself. Meanwhile, that's all for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day. See you in the next one, guys.